Hi, welcome back to Elgin 2030 in episode three in our series about the Elgin Animal Control Ordinance. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get moving. Tony? Yes, city manager? Does your website log access by IP? Well, why would you need to know that? We're just asking. Tony? What? I'm right here. What? I bet it feels pretty awful to have your website destroyed. Actually, it's not a big deal. We fixed it. We'll always be on YouTube under the Elgin 2030 channel. And it wasn't that serious. We're also making a Facebook page and a Twitter page. Uh, yeah, so losing the blog for a day, that actually gave me a chance to get caught up on other things. Ah, f***! So, some of the responsible dog owners in Elgin got together last Saturday, and I have to say, hats off to everybody that showed up. Daily, Daily Herald counted more than 100 people with us that day. We've got some great press, we got to meet some awesome pets, we got a great reaction from the people that passed us on the street. So for those who organized it, absolutely well done. I'm sure everyone knows the big vote for this ordinance is on Wednesday, and Councilman Priggy has reworked his propaganda page into an FAQ, and I thought I'd start by addressing the issues he uh, asked and answered. This episode may seem like I'm unfairly picking on Priggy, but this ordinance is obviously his witch hunt, and if there are other councilmen posting FAQs, I don't know about it. You know, I find this strange. Councilman, that you would accuse your, dis your detractors, and I assume you want to include me as well, of outright lies and what you call mistruths. Now, you cite no examples, so I thought I'd look specifically at the, your word choice. The word mistruth doesn't appear in the Merriam-Webster online or printed dictionary. It does, however, appear in the urban dictionary, and I bet that none of you knew that Priggs was so street. But the definition of mistruths in the Urban Dictionary is a statement that is true yet misleading. So you are accusing your detractors of telling lies and perhaps even more insidious of telling the truth. You say that three councilmen didn't vote against this ordinance, yet this is a lie since Councilman Stefan clearly indicated that the signage, fencing and transport license was ridiculous. Councilman Captain moved to table the vote until these issues could be de better defined and lost. When the Committee of the Whole voted to pass this to the City Council for a final vote, Councilman Stephan, Captain, and Dunn voted against, which was a clear indicator of voting against this ordinance as written. If this had not been the case, there would have been no reason to soften up the pit bull signage, fencing, and transport restrictions. I think your justification for not speaking to ex experts outside of Elgin is childish and laughable, since you are obviously collecting all of your legal justifications and evidence from outside of Elgin. And have you checked out your supporters lately? You can find them in the comments section of any newspaper publishing stories on this subject in their online sections. I've been told you can tell a lot about people from the company they keep. So what does it mean about this proposed ordinance that the great majority of your supporters are racist cowards hiding behind made up screen names who would probably be mortified if their friends and family knew what they were saying online? Your facts and figures about insuring pit bulls contain all sorts of mistruths, my down and out urban street warrior. You are correct that State Farm doesn't offer pit bull insurance because State Farm doesn't offer, doesn't use breed specific legislation because, and I quote, as an insurer, State Farm has not been able to determine the possibility that one breed will be less or more violent than another, unquote. Until your dog actually bites someone, State Farm will insure every breed. American Family, however, will not cover Akitas, American Pit Bulls, Staffordshire Terriers, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, Chows, Rottweilers, or Wolf Hybrids. So your mistruth is also misleading. There is no Pit Bull insurance. There are insurance companies that pay attention to breed, and there are insurance companies that do not. I love the point you make when you say that we need new laws to catch people breaking them. And when I say I love the point, I mean that it's possibly the most idiotic piece of political nonsense I've ever read. There are already laws on the books which aren't being enforced. What good do you think keeping on more regulation is going to accomplish? 
You use the, that's not my dog excuse at the meeting two weeks ago. What exactly in these new regulations is the magic bullet that trumps the most ingenious of move? I've just seen your dog attack a car. Well, that's not my dog. Well, do you know whose dog it is? Then two weeks later, now we have new laws, and I just saw your dog attacking that library. That's not my dog. Oh, this man must be a criminal genius. Someday we'll make a law that you can't slip through my ELAC super genius. Oh, and if only you used your mental powers for the betterment of your fellow man. Finally, I have no doubt that you spent hundreds of hours researching this issue because it would take hundreds of hours to be able to piece together enough bad press and legal judgments about a breed to support your position. On the other hand, you could spend about 30 minutes searching for actual scientific studies of pit bulls to end up with more non-repeating information than you could possibly use to defend the breed. In one of the versions of your site, you claim that dogs have killed at least 20 Americans so far in what you imply to be this year. Well, I actually researched the claims you made. You mentioned a three-day-old infant killed by a dog attack. That was a story from 2008, where the family pet, a Siberian Husky, killed the baby. Where you specified that an elderly couple was killed, that was in 2009, and they were killed by a pack of 11 to 14 dogs described as mongrels. You talked about a 10-year-old boy. That boy was not even killed, and wandered too close to two dogs, pit bulls, who were fighting when they turned on him. Doctors have been able to save the boy's arm, and he should make a complete recovery. That 20-year-old man you mentioned died last year. So from your specific examples, half of them are caused by pit bulls, but only one out of the four was a death caused by a pit bull. Based on this evidence, I find it very hypocritical that you would, use, you would accuse your detractors of inaccuracies, mistruths, and outright lies. And I'll close with the ultimate truth, as I've said it before. There is no single breed that makes up pit bull. There are four distinct, distinct breeds and at least 15 other breeds that closely resemble them physically. How can you compare facts about bite totals when there's no, I, no definitive way to identify a pit bull? I saw this point made a couple days ago on NoPitBullBands.com, and it bears repeating. In the court case of Margolius versus City of Denver, none of Denver's animal control officers could correctly identify an American pit bull terrier. You know, a friend of mine, a teacher, put it this way, quote, the real problem has nothing to do with dangerous breeds du jour. The problem is with the fundamental legal and logical principles at the foundation of BSL. On average, 85 to 90% of all homicides are committed by men. Should we ban them? If I propose to ban black males because, according to the National Crime Victimization Survey, they are responsible for the highest percentage of violent crimes, you would call me a racist. You would say I was profiling and be appalled that I would judge the actions of an entire group of people based on the actions of a few. How is BSL any different? It is breedism. If racism, sexism, ageism, and all those other isms are wrong, then breedism is wrong too. You cannot have it both ways." Unquote. So Wednesday will be the moment of truth for the council on this issue. I will be there. I'm sure you will be there as well. Whatever the outcome, the aftermath will be very interesting to watch. So that's about it from us at Elgin 2030. Green Lantern, why don't you take us out? Citizens of Elgin, good night and good luck.